This time we're gonna get a little more friendly. Oh, here we go. Don't flex right now. I want to. Sperm or blue? Excuse me? Pull a little more. Pull more. Oh, I definitely can't think when you're in my fucking chest like this. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Big guys aren't supposed to dance, man. That's true, that's true. What's going on out there at YouTube land? Today we are with the man, the myth, the legend. Seven time, 212, Mr. Olympia champion. The main man, Flex Lewis. How are you? He's a business owner, <laughs> entrepreneur, mastermind, owner of the brand new hottest gym in Las Vegas, Nevada, Dragon's Lair, previously Boca Raton, Florida. If you guys haven't been through, when you come to town, you have to come here to work out, man. He also owns the, the, the business with Arsenal Strength, the best equipment I've ever lifted on in my entire life. We went in there, we tried out every single machine, and I felt every single machine in the muscle belly instead of in the joint. And with somebody who has chronic arthritis and an autoimmune disease, like it was a, a breath of fresh air to be able to actually lift and get a pump and not have my joints hurt. So uh, if you're a gym owner, make sure you go check out their equipment. Arsenal, I'll stick it in the link below. And when you're in Vegas, you got to come lift here. You got to see where all the biggest, baddest bodybuilders in the region work out. So, you know, he's, he's training heavy again, had a couple injuries. Mm -hmm. Shout out to BioAccelerator for taking care of both of yes. us. Uh, got us both doing better now. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's getting a lot of body work done over here at the torture room. Dr. John Beadle over here, one of the Kairos here. They're taking good care of him. So he's gonna tell us a little bit about his road to recovery, what his plans in the future are, and uh, what got him into bodybuilding and the life of an entrepreneur. So, you ready? I'm ready. Let's what an, go. What an intro. <laughs> All right, Flex, so tell me, uh, you know, a, a lot of your fans out there, they're gonna be watching. Uh, they know you were having some shoulder issues, some knee issues, some elbow issues. Tell me about like the road to recovery. What's got you got your mask back on and like a little bit about the process of your rehab and, and the stem cells and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I had um, a number of injuries that have come, you know, from, believe it or not, my rugby days. So I've trained a lot of, around these uh, injuries for these trophies you see behind me for a number of years. So I no get, get, get into Getting to the point of me you now moving up into the open class, I knew that I had to address these injuries to make you know some big improvements. And um, one of the well, I say a few of the injuries ended up sidelining me going into the 2020 uh, Mr. Olympia, and that's why I ended up going to um, or, or looking at extensive recovery um, things that I've never gone down and looked at before, and it led me to the path of uh, stem cells. Um, as you know, BioAccelerator come heavily recommended by a lot of our mutual friends, UFC fighters and various other athletes and I've seen the, the change in their lives and that, that really was something that was interesting to me regardless of the stage stuff, the life change, you know? Sure. You found something back there? A couple of things. <laughs> I could feel it. And you said you've had pretty good results with the stem cells so Phenomenal results. Shout out to BioAccelerator. Um, this is not a plug, this is the truth. Just to give you a, a, a sort of a, a bigger perspective, you know, I'm squatting in again for the first time in 12 years. Wow. So that's massive for me, you know. And you're somebody who, you know, people always assume meathead. You're a really bright guy, you know a lot about physiology, a lot about business, and it seems that you've kind of figured out recovery too, like we talked about, you know, keeping your alignment right, getting your deep tissue work, getting your sleep down, something that you really invested heavily in that. Absolutely, absolutely. I've got a, you know, a lot of people in-house. I've, I've been uh, very blessed to work with some amazing people. Uh, now I'm confined the add you to the list of this, because how many times we've been trying to get together and do this, right? At least seven. <laughs> At least. And it's you all the time, you diva. You change your plans on me. A little bit of a deal, you know. <laughs> I think it's a combination of both, right? Both two passing ships. You come into town, I'm somewhere else, vice versa. So I'm, I'm a big believer of therapy, um, deep tissue, chiropractic care. Special work. Yep. Even uh, acupuncture. Right. Likewise. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, because a lot of people will neglect that. And, and the old heads will be like, oh, all you need to do is just lift heavy all the time. And, yeah, you know, work. now we're seeing them in their 50s and, you know, their bodies aren't really holding up. Yeah. So there's a time and a place for everything, but you can't run it, you know, in the red all the time, all year long. And mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, at least we're young enough to have seen that firsthand. Yeah. And, um, you know, also we were lucky enough to be young enough to have the Internet when we were coming up. You know, That's those guys, true. they just had, you know, old head advice from other guys in mm -hmm. their gym. Mm -hmm. um, and bodybuilding is actually, a, if you really think about it, it's a fairly new sport, you know. 
we're talking about the ascent is really in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. So we really we're, we're watching those guys, you know, RIP Franco, you know, uh, Arnold and those guys, we're watching them age and how their bodies move firsthand for the first time. Yeah. You know, some other sports, you know, boxing, basketball, they've been around a little longer, so we get to kind of see what happens to them later on. Mm -hmm. So we're still in a learning process of how bodybuilders age and, you know, what can they do to avoid the mistakes of the previous generation, not only from a, uh, you know, a musculoskeletal perspective, but from a physiological a, a longevity. You know, what are the people doing that are not making it very long? And what are the ones doing that are living to be 75, 80 years old and able to grow their business empires like Arnold Absolutely. has, like you're doing now, yep. um, to where it's not just on stage, it's gyms, it's giving people jobs, it's creating mm -hmm. opportunities for people, it's, you know, uh, teaching other people to follow in those paths, which yep. is really crazy. Absolutely, yeah. So who were the people that motivated you as a kid, you know, that made you want to start bodybuilding? Well, there was no kind of uncle or auntie or cousin that, that sort of uh, got me, uh, you know, looking in, into the, 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 the range of the, the gym. Mm. Um, I come from a rugby background, so powerlifting really goes hand in hand with rugby. So I started powerlifting at a very young age. But bodybuilding was something I've subconsciously, I don't know, it, it always appealed to me. I remember as a kid watching the WWF, or WWE now, uh -huh. and sneaking down and watching with my uncle at two or three in the morning. There you and go. Then you see the Ultimate Warrior, you see Macho Man, you yep. see all these guys with phenomenal physiques who are crazy, you know. Oh, um, yeah, and Ravishing Rick Rude. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Perfect, all yeah. that, that era. So I think subconsciously that sort of really hit home as a young kid. And then years later, when I was getting into rugby and I was doing the powerlifting, I just had this this thought about being like one of the most jacked rugby players on the field. There you go. Um, but prior to even all that, I, I found a book when I was 12 years old, and uh, that book changed my life. It was uh, Tom Platt's Encyclopedia. My aunt, my auntie was a nurse, and she was in uh, London. The King of Quads. Yes. And she went and seen Tom Platz's seminar, which was at a, a nursing college, and he was uh, on tour. So she met him, you know, found him very interesting, bought his book, had it signed, and came back to Wales to um, my grandparents, obviously brought the book, left it in her little library in the room. And me being a 12-year-old nosy little bugger, I found this book, pulled it out, and it blew my mind rocked by the little world and I seen this guy with these massive quads and I thought man I wasn't the arms it wasn't you know I'm a big chest it was just having these gigantic legs and playing rugby of course sure so you guys wear short shorts yeah yeah so then I set off to to have these uh these these you know, set of legs and I just remember at a young age my dad had a pair of uh, an old barbell um, weeder weights in the shed. Remember the old plastic mm -hmm. coated ones? Yep. We had some too. Yes. And my, my dad had them. My dad never used them, so they were kind of corroded, rusted. You couldn't pull the weights on, uh. you couldn't pull them off. So I remember waiting for my parents to leave one day, going up to the shed and literally walking this or rolling this barbell through the house and going up the stairs one step at a time, getting this and godly amount of weight that felt like at that point in time um, up to my room uh, hid it under the bed and there I formed a little workout regime every single day where I look at this encyclopedia and I was like okay so that bar goes on your back okay how do I do that I was too you know I wasn't heavy uh, sorry, strong enough to to get that bar on my back at that age so I ended up lifting it up onto my bed shimmying myself back against <laughs> the bed rolling the weight onto my back and then I was like okay right okay I guess that looks like he's sitting down see a squat right because it's and not then, a video it's no, pictures yeah and once you have to imagine what it's doing yeah so one rep turned to two two turned to three three to four and then next thing I was doing about 30 little you know reps over a period of time and and then uh one day my my dad just burst in the room and I think he thought I was doing something else, being a, a 12 year old kid, huffing and puffing and yelling in the room. So I think he was kind of relieved to find out that I wasn't. Okay. But also the fact that I had the weights. He was you like, thought you were doing Dance Dance Revolution? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Politely saying, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you are, baby. <laughs> and uh, 
he obviously looked at the weights and was like, listen, yeah, you're too young to be on these, you're just going to stunt your growth. And I was like, listen, dad, <laughs> you're five foot four, mommy's five foot four. <laughs> I'm, I'm at that point in time about the same height. It was, I wasn't going anywhere, but um, you know, I was the weights were taken off me and a number of years later, I ended up joining the gym at about 15, started powerlifting and that's where the story continues, you know? Okay. Um, I started competitively powerlifting. And, um, so just putting meat on the frame, kind yeah, of? Yeah, yeah, to help my rugby. Um, what, what are your all-time best lifts on the big three? Oh my gosh, you're going way back now. When was the last time you maxed? It's been a teenager? Yeah, yeah. I've not chased them for a number of years. There's no point. Bodybuilding is not about maxing. Right, and completely stuff. different sports. Yeah. Does so, anybody ever come up to you at like Whole Foods and say, hey, what do you bench? It happens at least like once or twice a week. <laughs> especially when I'm doing stuff outside the sport. Like I've, yeah, yeah, I've people that don't know you. Everybody yeah. that knows you is different. Yeah, and especially this business seminar I was at the yeah. this, this last couple bro, of days. What do you bench, bro? How much you bench? How much you squat? Well, I say I don't. I well, don't. How much you think you can? Like I, I don't like, really bench. Do you yeah. do barbell flat, flat bench? No. No. no I, yeah. No, no. I haven't done it for years. Yeah. I, I think it's just not a good it's exercise. It's not a great exercise no. for your shoulders. And there's a lot better ways to grow your chest. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in continuation, at 15, I, I joined the gym um, and I was training with my friends. Fast forward, 18 years old, posted up on the, on the gym wall and the gym owner was like, you know, you should do this show. I, I also had my nickname Flex at six years old, nothing to do with body, but in all rugby. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, okay. How does it relate to rugby? Um, Is that like slang? Yes, yeah, somebody gave me the nickname Flex. Flexi, of yeah, sh for short, Flexi, and uh, it kind of stuck. I used to get out of all the predicaments on the field, I guess. I used to be flexible. Is it, oh, so okay. much anymore. okay. As you're, as you're rigidly pulling me apart, <laughs> I'm not that flexible anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so that nickname uh, has really fallen into the bodybuilding. But um, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I think I was, yeah, six years old when I got that nickname. So. Uh, 18, 19, going back there, I, I, I was told by the gym owner, if you do this show, I'll give you a free gym membership. So, of course, at the time, you know, money was tight. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in college. Yeah, I was in college, early, first year of college. So I was like, oh, how hard can this be? You know, I run for my country. I played rugby for a high level. I've done gymnastics. It's like this. So I ended up, you know. Let's go in and out like that. Out, throw myself in the mix. Okay. Um, I bought a Flex magazine. Nobody in the gym told me anything about diet then. I looked at this. Flex yeah, did magazine. you tell him it was named after you? It's my magazine, <laughs> yeah. <homie. laughs> yeah, I wish. So uh, I um, looked at this guy's diet that they posted uh -huh. and I literally dissected it. I was like, okay, if he's eating all this food, I'm going to eat half. So who are your favorites when you pick up those old Flex magazines? and Lee Priest. Okay. Yeah, when they shot the guys. Um, I think yeah. everybody's got, you know, Guys, they kind of looked up to. I could relate to Lee Priest being more, uh -huh. more than anything because he was short. Obviously, Arnold at some point in time. Yeah, yeah, not but, so much now. But at our age, that wasn't. Uh, I mean, yeah. you, at, we didn't know him as a bodybuilder, right? We knew him as the Terminator. Yeah, Terminator, you know? exactly. But yeah. other guys like uh, you know, Sean Ray yeah. or you know Flex Wheeler or yeah. people like that were the people that we yeah. saw. And all these guys kind of train in my gym now, which is kind of which weird. is awesome, it's right? Kind of full, like, full, yeah. full circle. So, so all those legends come here to yeah, train this gym to tell you how good this gym is. Full by the circle. Way. So Full circle. circle. They all come here because yeah. any any given day you're going to see some IFBB pros rolling around the yeah. the gym here at Dragon's Lair. Oh. What's up with the dragon thing? That's my country's flag. Okay. Yeah. Sperm or blue? Excuse me. Sperm or blue? What do you mean? Which whales do you prefer? <laughs> I don't know. As he's digging into my freaking what is that? A little serratus action. Yeah. Playing the guitar. Playing the guitar. Yes, sir. Oh. You don't have a whale you prefer? No. No, okay. If I say sperm whale, it'll go high, you know, there's too many uh, memes that can be made. About sperm? With you take, dig it into me and talking about sperm whales. Yeah. <laughs> so blue it is. Blue it is. Blue it is, that's his favorite whales. And so what's, what's the, uh, so if you're looking at, at Westeros or whatever, what's the an analogy for whales? Which, which part of that would that be? What do you mean? In Game of Thrones. Oh, I don't know. Because everything is like analogous, right? You put yeah. the UK upside down and put it on top of it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even thought about that. All right, we got homework. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, I love Game of Thrones. He's yeah. going to be a Lannister, I think. 
You think so? I think so. Oh, jeez, oh, Louise. You just did the dragons, though, right? Dragon. What about the ending, though? Oh, that was terrible. The last two episodes. <laughs> All of that! I know. All of that! I devoted my life to this. <laughs> and you just you just kill the dude off the, the white the what's what's his name? Uh, uh White the, Walker? No um the, uh, the king. Yeah uh, um King of the Night King, Cold King, King yeah, Cold. No that's uh, Dragon Ball Z. Um uh the Cooler Freezer now the White Walker is uh Night um Night oh, the King. the Walker, the White Walker, the Night I think we need Google. Night King? Somebody correct us in the comments. Yeah please they're going to be, laugh. they're gonna be laughing at us. Embarrassing right now. Yeah, I know. I promise we're better nerds than this. Yeah. So take this arm in and out. Yeah. Did you did you read comic books as a kid too? No, we no? The comics wasn't big in the UK. No? No. Because that was one for me too. Like I would read a lot of Marvel and, and mm. DC comics and get the action figures and I'm like, man, I want to look yeah. like the Silver Surfer. Yeah. Well, He-Man was pretty much the guy that was, you know. The Master most, of the universe. The, the, yeah, the most jacked, I think, character yeah. I knew at the time. So how long did you watch wrestling for? Oh, I watched it a lot for, I mean, that was the kind of the thing, right? Sure. And because it was the... Uh, well, it really peaked in like the late 80s, early 90s yeah. right there as far as like popularity. Yeah. And then of course you have the Monday Night Wars and all that kind of stuff, but a lot of people sort of stopped watching it around maybe the end of Attitude Era, I think. I think when... And it, we're, you know, in yeah. that, that age demo where you're in high school, we've got yeah, a girlfriend. Exactly. Probably not watching as much wrestling at that point, no, right? No, no. But what, what was, when did it turn to WWE? Oh boy, I don't know. That's yeah. a good question. Because they lost the lawsuit, right? Yes. So was it the they World did. Wildlife well, Federation, Federation Foundation exactly. or something? Yeah, foundation. Vince, what the hell, man? You're going to lose to a Wildlife Foundation? A panda. Of Come people. on, a panda? That was that was a prediction. Nobody knew there was going to be a panda emic, you know? <laughs> Somebody boo this man. <laughs> He's got the snare ready for me. Exactly. All right, pull that shoulder blade back. Pull a little more. Pull more. And pull more. Tell me about Vegas. You're liking Vegas? Probably? I love Vegas, man. Absolutely love it. And so obviously you always came here for expos yeah. and for, you know, for the uh, uh, the Olympia and everything like correct, that. Correct, correct. And I come up to you quite a lot for you know the fights too with Monster. That's right. So mm -hmm. it's kind of becoming like a second home for me. And and myself and my wife even talked about having a, a secondary home here that we could Airbnb and come out when we when we chose. Um, and then you know obviously the pandemic hit, right? Yep. So we knew what we had with the Dragons Lair in Boca Raton, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of fans that had, you know, drove in, flew in, that thought the gym was open to the public because ah. of all the VIPs that came, right? Right. Um, but then when we sat down and we were like, what's keeping us here in Florida? And we looked around, we're not going to lie, I looked around for various different buildings, mm -hmm. and nothing that I had seen I fell in love with. You know when you walk into something you know in your heart of yeah. hearts? So one of my best friends, lives out in Vegas um, and he's into you know big production jobs and he started sending my wife some real estate pawn you know this is what you can get as compared to Boca Raton sure so he's he was smart he, <laughs> he knew you go for the wife yeah you know and, and uh, she's born and raised in Florida okay. so she's been there for all them years so once she was okay babe I think we should check this out so we ended up jumping on a plane coming out here don't tell didn't tell anybody look the uh, the lay of the land mm -hmm. by the time that we got back on a plane, landed, like one or two houses are already off the market. So we were like, oof. And it wasn't like pressure. Right. I just wanted to really investigate it. We came mm. out again, and this is when I found this place, when I found my house. Um, and it just I, all fell in line. It fell all in line. Nice. So I'm, I'm very blessed. And so the weather here is very different than the UK, obviously, right? Yeah, but you know what, though? It's a lot colder than I, I anticipated. In the winter? I, I'm a, for a longer period of time, too. Sure. Um, we know we're, Compared to see, Florida, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Florida is just. There's uh, snow up on the mountains out west. I know. And you can see Mount Charleston's got the snow. Yeah. But today's a beautiful day. Yeah. So I think you know the spring weather's coming in. And yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy. You're to, digging it? Yes. Okay, cool. Take this hand and, you know, reach it down towards your foot. And then shrug. And then reach. And shrug. And reach. And shrug. And reach. And shrug. So you started bodybuilding. When did you know that you had something special with it? You know, was there somebody that told you? Did you have a moment where you're like, you know, I really have a future in this? You know, I, a couple of people um, over the years were saying, oh, you should, you should compete. I didn't know what that meant. You know, so again, when I had the ability to do it for a free gym membership, I kind of threw myself into the into the mix. 
Um, oh. You didn't sneak in and pay secretly. Oh, that's tight. You didn't come in and give him thirty bucks secretly. You who it did my gym? Oh, that's tight. Well, I always forget about the insertions around the chest. Yeah. <clears throat> And you were saying? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you got you got the free gym membership out of it? Well, I had to compete first. Okay. So I, I, I went through that whole process, like I said, Flex Magazine, um, and to kill myself. It was like the first show and the worst prep I've ever done. And what year is this, roughly? Oh my gosh. It's going to be... Oh, I definitely can't think when you were in my fucking chest like this. <laughs> um... 90, uh, what is it, 97 I think, something like that, okay. I have to really think about it, but yeah, it was 17, so you were 13, 14, 19, 19 is when I done my show, okay. worked that out, that month out, so two, oh, 03, yeah, oh, 03, there we go, yeah, that's right, <laughs> thank you, I was like 97, at the Okay, and so oh. around that time, that was like peak, you know, Ronnie Coleman versus Jay Cutler yeah, era. Yeah, exactly. So me looking at myself as a bodybuilder, like there was no classes back then. There was no like 212 or anything like that. It was right. just... No physique, you know, no, no bikini. You know, was it wellness no. is the new one? The new one's the one, one, yeah. But um, back then it was just straight bodybuilding, right? So... And when I hear wellness, all I think is like a weed dispensary, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, they have a wellness division? So are these people just smoking <laughs> out on stage yeah, or whatever? Exactly. 24-7, yeah. you can drive up? Okay. Um, so they it, just said open. It just said open. So I was looking at myself as this 19 year old, just like, how, how can I compare myself to that, you know? But um, bodybuilding was really popular in, in Wales. It's just a, you know, blue collar kind of place, I, you know, Wales is, and people love to train. So. Does Mason Ryan come in here? Uh, no, but he's yeah. from Vegas, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't I've, I've seen him, I met him years ago, but I haven't seen him recently for a long time. Okay, we'll have to yeah. bring the dragons together. Absolutely. So we, uh, so I, so I did the, the show. I ended up winning the show on my my crazy uh, May diet. Is that the same place that you were opposite? Yep. Yeah, it's tight. It's not as tight as this thing. Yeah, like it's definitely tighter. And uh, there's a spot there though. Yeah. <sighs> oh yeah, burns a little bit, right? Burns like the Dickens. That went to the face. Usa. Competed in my first show, won my first show, walking out the doors. All my friends came to college, big bag of chocolates because I love chocolates. I'm playing rugby. And Did you think you were going to win? Uh, I trained to win. Okay. You know, but it's a very competitive class, and and you know, a lot of people like when I first competed, I was like, you know, if I play top five, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. You you thought you were gonna win going. I, I trained to win, so whatever happened on the day, you know, was out of my hands. You would have been pissed if you lost. Oh yeah. Okay. That's what makes the greatness, right? That's what we're talking about. Yeah. And, some uh, of us are just happy with a trophy. Some of, some <laughs> yeah. of us aren't. And that's why you end up with this many trophies up yeah. on the walls because you're built different. My amateur ones is like twice as much. I mean, I've got trophies all over my my parents house one uh, i think my mr universe trophy is my grand's doorstop <laughs> <laughs> true story <laughs> it's okay. holding the door back but it's a huge humongous trophy no that's still so you know shit. getting in these yeah these little nitty gritty yeah because your pec it attaches all along the ribs mm -hmm. the entire way down so if you're trying to get extension a lot of times the limitation mm -hmm. can even be on the sternum like the fascia right here yeah. So basically, you'd have somebody lay you over a, like one of the big balls mm -hmm. and work right along that spot mm -hmm. to get full access to it. Mm -hmm. You know the bouncy balls? Mm -hmm. so you'd lay over that with your arms open, your arch, your back arch, mm -hmm. and they can clear all along here. Right. And it even ties in down here on the fascia because mm -hmm. the fascia goes from the pecs onto the ribs too. So that'll allow you to get your shoulder blades back more, which then protects your shoulders more too. Because mm -hmm. you can get your scapulas all the way back, right. which then clears your humerus. Mm -hmm. All right, let's put that C-spine. So we're gonna get it right there. Will be your right big toe. Good. Then side we go down. Nice. Easy peasy. 
So you win your first show. Yeah, I win my first show. I'm walking out the auditorium. Sorry, you were in my chest. So I, re I don't know how much stories I finished. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many stories I've, uh, I've, I've completed, but um, I, I won my first show. I was walking out the auditorium and uh, I got chased out by uh, one of the guys who was judging and he was like, uh, I think you should compete in the British Nationals. And, and as you know, like there's massive rivalry between Wales and England, right? So it's kind of like a trigger switch. And uh, he followed me to the car, my parents were there, and, and I was looking at my parents, he was like, you, you need to compete, represent Wales against uh, England, Scotland, Ireland. Who do, you, who do you have the biggest rivalry with? England. Okay. Ask any Celt. It's always England. Gotcha. So whoever England are playing, uh, we're, we're, you know, going for the opposite team. Gotcha. It's just the Welsh thing. Just, just the way it is. It's a Celtic thing, yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, he was like, you should compete, and, and kind of talked me into it, and and that's Neil Hill. Okay. That's my coach to this day, 19 years later. Wow. Yeah, 19 years later, we, we, we teamed up, and, you know, the grass is not greener, and he was, you know, loyal to me, and, you know, I've remained the same. Nice. Very so, commendable. Yeah. And then tell me about the first time you got the, the big old trophy. The first Olympia one? Yeah, what was that feeling like? Oh, unbelievable. It was kind of like... Was that just relief or was that more like euphoria or, or uh, was it one of those things where you just expected it? Just like this feels in my chest right now. Great. <laughs> it was a great feeling. It was, uh, you know, something that I kind of said to myself that it was just that defining moment where I was like, okay, I, I knew I could do this. And you've proved to yourself you can, you know? Uh -huh. And then defending it was reassurance that it wasn't a fluke. Mm. So every year there's been a storyline, right? Okay. First, first being the first, second defending it. Mm -hmm. Third was the 50th year anniversary. Fourth was we found out me and my wife were, uh, she was expecting. expecting. So that was like a sixth gear I never knew I had. And then my goal was, and I've never seen this as a, a years back, but I remember Sergio Olivia brought Sergio Olivia Jr. Okay. As, a, as an infant on stage. And he held him up like this, like, like the, yeah, like the Lion King, I was just going to say. Yeah. And I had that vision in my head, I wanted to do that. So number five, yeah, that's and that's it. my screenshot, uh, that's my screensaver okay. on my phone. Um, and then number six was going to be it. Um, but unfortunately, you know, there was all the, the, the issues that happened prior to that. Mm -hmm. So I told myself, you know, this is the, the number seven was was it, and I, I I made sure that it was the best look I ever done. And everybody, uh, and also I've been on the road all around the world. So if people didn't get visas, mm -hmm. like some of these countries like Iran and stuff can't get visas to US. Right. You know, they had all these athletes that were complaining that you know, oh, if I was there, so I went on the road. Well, come on then, let's exactly. go. Exactly. So go. I'm blessed to say I was undefeated as a 212 athlete, and I went everywhere, faced everybody. So. Uh, I retired in that class very happily. Retired yeah. unbeaten. Yeah, in the 212. And oh, Floyd Mayweather bodybuilding over here. <laughs> can't be touched, can't be moved, can't be rocked. Let's get this ankle. All right, relax that leg completely. Good. All right. Oh, f hell. There we go. <laughs> I felt that in my lower, like my lower spine. Good. Yeah? Thank you. That's what he wanted it on yeah, my neck. Decompress all the way down. Yikes! <laughs> wow. <laughs> I I honestly I, I thought I was gonna have it at my neck, uh -huh. but it was all it, lower. It goes where the compression doesn't get to. So if somebody like pulls you like there, yeah. and they're not strong enough on top, yeah. and they're not strong enough on bottom, it won't go all the way down. Uh, Stan did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It works out. <laughs> yeah, that got that got. Oof. <laughs> I felt that straight away. Right yeah. yeah. Yeah, look at this, I got my salsa. Hey, he's got a salsa on. <laughs> Big guys aren't supposed to dance, man. No, that's true, that's true. <laughs> Gangsters don't dance, they boogie. That's what I've heard at least. All right, let's get your oblique here. So I'm gonna hold right there. Oh my God, <laughs> hold on a minute, hold on a minute. <laughs> pummel, pummel. All right, tilt your upper body to the left. All right, so, so undefeated up there. So then let's talk a little bit about like your relationship with Monster and like, when did you become a big MMA fan? Because oh. obviously I see you at the fights a lot. You're kind of VIP up in the front row at the UFC fights. Yeah. Like what prompted your love of MMA and then how did you get involved and get to know all these guys so well? Um, Kind of like relationship building, right? So I'm a massive relationship builder with- To, with, to the left? To the left. Oh, right. Yeah, it's all away from me. Oh, away? Yeah. You do? Uh, like a teapot? Like Stop, you, you good. Your thanks, bro, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like this. So tilt like that. Oh, like this. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, sir. No Thanks, Dan. And again. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I've been a massive fan of UFC for a number of years. MMA in general, just Bellator, UFC, okay. One Glory, WEC. When did you start watching? Um, probably like on the double digits. Okay. UFC, probably like 10, 11, or something like this, you know? Oh, okay, so way yeah, back. Yeah, way back. Way back, okay. Yeah. And, you know, then over the years, I kind of get to know these guys, you right. know, through all the events that I've done. Um, so I've been with Monster now in the last couple of years. Uh huh. Which is definitely long. Up to the right. <laughs> and then back to center. And again to the right. And center. And again. Center. And again. And center. And again. And center. And again. So who were your favorite fighters then growing up? Well, one of my, my boys originally, Anthony Rumble Johnson. Uh -huh. Um, I followed his career from the get go. Okay. Um, and I've been friends then. Because you knew him in Florida? Yeah. Yeah. We were kind of on the road together, BSN days, okay. Aspari days. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously Anderson Silva and big fan of John Jones. Sure. You know. Um, I just. Uh, Would you take a light take from John Jones? No. Okay. I've seen you done it. Crazy, bro. <laughs> Yellow. Um, Yellow. You wouldn't take one? No. I got too much. I got too much. I got too much. The question out. is, will I be brave enough to take one for Francis and Ghana? Yeah. The question. I'll, I think I'll do it. I think you I'll think do so? It. My wife's over there saying no. She's like, I think I'll take it. I can take it. It's not a question of if you can, if you can take it. Yeah. It's just the, the, the traumatic trauma that I comes think with I'm it. pretty durable, man. I think I can take it. Men. <laughs> they all think they can do anything. Whatever for YouTube favorites, right? I can take it. I have to nurse you back. For, uh, yeah, yeah. for my for my two million subscriber, Francis and Ghana leg kick. Let's go. So if you want to see me get kicked by Francis, start spreading around, give me some more subs. Yeah. Because I'm like, where can I take a shot without getting brain damage, you know? Yeah. I was like, where are you getting hit? Yeah. Right. Because I was like, maybe I'll wear headgear and take yeah. a punch from him. Uh, I'm like, no. I don't know. I can still, I'm not spoiling my words yet, so. How long did it take you to recover from the leg kick from Jones? From John? Well, four days or so, maybe. Yeah. How, how yeah. bad, how sore was it? It was bad. Yeah. Then he punched me in the exact same spot, like immediately oh, afterward. Oh, jeez. Because I was trying to figure out, I'm like, all right, how do I do this and not blow my MCL and my meniscus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll be real heavy on it and then yeah. push out into okay. it. Okay. And then he's a lot taller than me, so he's chopping down on me like yeah. that, right? Oh, God. So, I mean, I still have like a little, who knows if there's a little bone in there now, because you can get what's called, uh, uh, Myositis ossificans, yeah. where the bruise actually turns into bone inside okay. the muscle. So you can get a bone island in your muscle from trauma. So, so you want to have now have a leg kick from Francis Nagano on the other leg, just to match it up. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Symmetrical. As long as, yeah. it sucks. You, <laughs> you saw where Forrest Griffin broke that dude's leg, right? The reporter asked him to do it, and he cracked his femur yeah. with a kick. Oh, yeah, exactly. I've seen all this stuff. I've seen guys taking leg kicks, yeah, yeah. hit the ground, can't get back up. Yeah, um, so that one hurt. Yeah. And then when Holly got me for my one million subscriber, yeah. she, like John kind of caught me on IT band femur. Yeah. Holly got me like dead center quad. So that actually was like, my knee kept buckling for like five days after that because it was like dead in the muscle. So that was pretty rough. And she's a, you know, yeah. I was a big girl. She's, she's tough. Five nine, five ten, buck seventy, like yeah. strong lady. So, you know, I'm okay though. Took a judo throw from Hector Lombard, you know, like. Yeah, nothing, I'm still here. Nothing I'm still here. I, nothing I want to do for my subs, don't worry. <laughs> he just get, he just get my passion work tortured. <laughs> He's like, it's not worth it. No. All right, let's stand up. So I'm gonna bring it right here. Yep. Let's put both hands up here. Like this. Yeah. I'm gonna hook you in there. Go right there. Look up a little bit. Yeah, relax the shoulders. Easy peasy. All right, let's do a face down. Yep. Give me the Big deep breath. And out. Good. And not too much on that one. So what are the businesses you have going on? So our, tell me about Arsenal. Um, Arsenal Strength, we started in 2015. By the way, best equipment. Did you help in the design? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got engineers, uh, amazing engineers. But uh, there's, there, again, you know, there's, this company is made by athletes for athletes. So there's been prototypes that have been made. I've jumped on a plane. We've literally changed them in the welding shop to, to you know, because it's one spec is one thing. Right. Having it practically moving and working is another. So um, we're not too far off, if, if off at all, but uh, there's, there's also a lot of fun to uh, 
you uh, you get a chance to play on something you've just created, you know? Right. So for like gym gym owners out there, like if they wanted to incorporate that equipment, where would they go to, to get that info? MyArsenalStrength.com. Okay. We have a full catalog online, and um, it's American made, American steel. You know, we pride ourselves in, in in all of the above, and you know, we've been able to keep the doors open during the pandemic, keep people in work. We have uh, over two hundred employees wow. in Arsenal. Yeah. And, uh, he's yeah. not a businessman. He's a businessman. <laughs> So it's, uh, yeah, it's been good, and then obviously I've got uh, the gym here and, and a few other endeavors that are kind of mailbox money, you know? Okay. And then, I've, and then the, and the brand, then the Flex Lewis brand, is a whole different thing. The sponsorships and, uh, um, you know, the things that go along with being a uh, bodybuilder, professional athlete, whatever. Gotcha. So I wear several different hats. And, uh, you know, obviously what I do as a brand is a business. So okay. it's, uh, I thought my calves were going to be a lot tighter. Yeah, them. I thought they were too. Just taking care of them. Yeah. Taking care of business. So out of the different hats that you wear, are any of them fedoras? Fedoras? <laughs> Nothing as of recent. Not a fedora guy. But I'm, I'm open to any suggestions. Okay. So if somebody, a fedora company wanted to sponsor you. Oh. You're open. I'm, I'm, I'm open to rock the fedora. The invitation's open, guys. Yeah, Somebody uh, reach yeah, out. You know, money talks. Money talks. Fedoras rock. Fedoras rock. Raise this leg up as high as you can, Flex. Okay, now the other side. Okay, does it feel the same to you? This feels like I got more flexibility than this one. Okay. It's tight. This one's and, and when you get jammed up in your low back, is it usually yeah. like around there? Yeah. Like right in there? Yeah, that's it. Left side gets more. Yeah. Like, Video of me getting hammered from behind. <laughs> yeah, Film it, I'll send it to my wife. I'm putting that on Pornhub. Yeah. Probably Bill Gates nailed for me. <laughs> the Derek Lewis video was already on there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Category was already taken, he said. Alright, raise that leg again. There we go. That was easier? Yes, yeah, so. I gotta use the big hammer, the Model M9. Flex. The, the Model 4 is just not going to cut it on a big man like this. Do you, have, do you have your own hammers yet? Yeah, man. Ah, customized. Custom chisels. Oh, damn. Left side up again. Go ahead and raise that leg. There we go. Back down. And if you're interested, sunm-edu.com. We have CEs for PTs and Kairos and paper paths. Sell the instruments as well. Coming soon. All right. What's again, the name the of the company? Huh? What's the name of the, is it under you? Your name? It's, it's unnamed as of yet. Oh, well we have to come up with something. It's a, it's a collaboration. Uh -huh. I mean, you got a steel company, maybe we get to talk some production, man. Okay, let's go. Let's go, champ. <laughs> All right, left side up again. Back down, ah, oh, there we go. This time we're gonna get a little more friendly. Oh, here we go. Don't flex right now. Come on. All right, left side up again. Yeah, back down. Definitely get more out of the top edge. That's right there. All right, left side up again. Yeah, that felt easier. See it? That felt easier? Yeah. That's right. So this okay, right side up again. Back down. So it's definitely left. Left up again. Yeah. How's that spot? It's tight. Like a ductor tire? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of tweaked it last week. What were you doing? Adductors. Oh. And then I done pendulum squats. Ah, that'll yeah. do it. Yeah. That'll do it. So I done adductors on uh It's given up pretty easy though. Thursday. And then I train legs on uh no, sorry, I train the uh, hamstrings and adductors on Monday and then I train legs on, on Thursday and it was just still not ready enough. Okay. Well that's the smart thing that you figured out is like 
when you do get muscle strains or, or pulls or whatever, you know, getting that deep tissue right away keeps the scar tissue from setting in and yeah. keeps your mobility. So a lot of guys don't realize that and, they're, and they let little nags turn into really serious things down the road. And that's people that get a lot of body work, they kind of keep that away. Yeah. And so like we kind of figured out like the, the just last little missing ingredient was that cartilage recovery. Oh, yeah. And that's where stuff like regenerative medicine stem cells, you know, that's really the future. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I really believe it. Like I said, we're going back next month to get it again. So nice. uh, that's how impressed I was. Yeah. That feels a lot better. Yeah. 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 So sure. go hand on hip. On this one. Yep. Yeah. I pull that elbow back pretty hard. Good. Same thing on this side. We'll go right there. Pull. Good. Ooh, nice. All right. Shake it out. See you go there, man. Yeah, I feel loose. This feels a lot better already. Yeah. I do feel loose. Oh, I'm choking him. Oh! <laughs> it was gymnastic days, no. I was gonna say, it does you, did you do backflip? No, I didn't, yeah, no. Do you still do a backflip? Couple of drinks, yeah. Okay. Get a couple of drinks on a sandy beach. Get him lubed up a little bit, a little bit of soft piercing. The lube, the lube, not so much. Lube him up a little? No? <laughs> just, just me, huh? That's you, that's you. Just me, uh, you lube me up, bro. I'm, I'm easy. Yeah, Feels good, man. at least two drinks. My, ch my chest is my weakest body, you can probably tell that it's not much tissue here compared mm -hmm. to other body parts. Mm -hmm. And I've always had a hard time connecting, you know, mind the muscle connection in my chest. Mm -hmm. My front delts are always Take over everything. And I try to put my shoulders back and, and squeeze into mm -hmm. as much as I can, but as soon as the weight starts going up, mm -hmm. you know, my front delts start kicking in. But this is, this is kind of new to me. Yeah, have them, have, have those guys kind of get on the bottom edges of it here yeah. too. It's like all these internal attachment sites. Yeah. It was very gristly when you were there. I felt dead. Mm -hmm. Probably because not be worked on. Exactly. Because like I said, I'm sure they're working out here in the yeah. front of the shoulders and the Real pecs out here. And everything else too. Everybody yeah. does that, right? People yeah. always forget about the internal. And same here on the top of the abs mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Like if you're trying to get yourself back on stage, yeah. if people aren't working the bottom of the ribs there, mm -hmm. it's going to keep you from being able to get to get full lower back engagement for yeah. one. Yeah. So you're, you're fighting harder. It's just the, the, the simple neglected spots. Yeah. It's usually in the center. Yeah. Because everything moves out here, so everybody's uh -huh. thinking about all this stuff. Right. Oh, hip flexor, so as, you know. Yeah. But the baseline, ab attachments on the ribs, pec attachments yeah. on the sternum, even like SCM stuff in here on the right. collarbone, everybody neglects that shit. Wait, where, where, oh, wow. where, where did you work on that you felt like it's that, that I need more attention on? So like particularly here, yeah. like all this stuff right in here, okay. and then more on the bottom part over here, mm -hmm. and then a little yeah, bit on I the fascial that. stuff here. Yeah. So it's there's, there's fascia that connects the pec to the rib too. Mm -hmm. So you're okay here, right? Mm -hmm. You don't feel yeah. much of it. It's gonna be in there that you still have some yeah, of that. Yeah, especially on this side too. That fascia, yeah, yeah. the right was definitely yeah. You know, this stuff well, you've done here. a great job because it's not so bad, no. Yeah, but that's uh, yeah, all, all this tie in here, yeah, yeah like there, you feel uh, that? Yeah, so easier access to it, like I said, if you haven't put you over one of the, the bouncy balls yeah. and, and lay back like that, they can access all that internal stuff oh, yeah. and it'll fall open with gravity as it unlocks, too. So, don't I feel like I've just done a chest workout, yeah, because it's so you know, you got that. that Second day doms, mm -hmm. it's really sore. And so normally right when now, I, man, I thought I, I felt like I had flu last night because really? I haven't been sore like that in so long. Right. I love that. <laughs> I love you in that. I'm like, man, am I sick? Uh, like, too, right? Earlier was yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but everything else, I mean, normal tightness trap. Yeah, yeah. Next, but stuff. I'm amazed with this. Yeah, and obviously just, my my adductor was tight. The tie in my adductor too. Yeah, I know you were having fun up there. <laughs> it's okay. We'll keep that. Don't worry. I got the video of having all the fun. It's all with imaging the legs. All right. And then, uh, any just like initial advice for young people that yeah. want to get into bodybuilding? Just like five like basic principles that you think, just starting with meat and potatoes that uh, people don't tend to think about. Whether it's simplistic advice. Yeah. You know. Well, consistency is bodybuilding, right? Sure. You know, uh, make a plan and plan to fail. So that that's in general. So if you're talking about. Um, uh, you know, you say your, your training is done, right? It, down packed. You gotta make sure that you're uh, feeding your body for, and then feeding your body after recovery. And a lot of guys will think, okay, well, I'm eating two to three big meals a day. That's not that's not the case. You gotta think of your body as a as a machine, um, and you're feeding the machine or feeding the fire. Or another analogy is think of your body like a, a locomotive, an old school locomotive. Right. If you was to put a lot of coal in that fire, it would kill the fire. That same pile, if you was to put it in little by little, you'll keep that fire burning all night long. And that's what you gotta think of food and, the, and your body as the flame, the metabolism. Um, so again, the bodybuilding is a, a marathon, not a sprint. So you know, a lot of the young guys will come into this 
uh, sport they've been here for you know a week and like oh I'm not getting big enough fast enough I'm drinking protein shakes and this and the other you know there's there's a process to everything you know um, Rome wasn't built in a day right so they want to look like you know Jay Cutler they want to look for photos of myself whatever it be uh, that that didn't ho happen for either of us you know in a, in a you know over overnight you know it took years and years and years and if you look at photos of me uh, as a very young kid at 15 years old I had genetics you could see shape structure come in um, but again I learned fast enough that uh, I love to train but I was severely under eating as soon as I started eating five to six meals a day the difference was amazing mm. fast uh, five meals kind of got me to a certain destination six meals was that like that, that next level if you can push more food even better okay uh, so the sport is all based around food granted if you're putting the work in in the gym sure. and say that you are now taking it in the gym um, get with a training partner get with somebody that has the same goals as you same uh, chemistry doesn't have to be the biggest guy just somebody that's there has your back that's going to be there uh, day in day out not a flaky guy and somebody that's consistent and then uh, just learn as you as you guys go along you know pick pick up books look at the internet you know don't get caught up with all the, the fancy training but I'm saying look the um, the bread and butter the peas and potatoes what other and other analogies you can use um, everything is pretty much documented online you can see tried and tested over the years you know um, the basic equipment you can get in any gym you know it can be seen uh, online and, and a structured follow so there's there's so much advice I could give somebody that's just got in into the gym right now that I could be here all day but bottom line is have fun don't go crazy you know marathon not a sprint sure. enjoy the process because you can grow very fast as a young kid as long as you get in their meals in and you're enjoying your training. Nice. Good advice, good advice. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So if you haven't, make sure you go check out his YouTube channel. It's just yeah. Flex Lewis, right? That's Flex Lewis. Just straight up his name. So go subscribe over there. If there's going to be any news about the Olympia, any com competition, there's still some things in the air. It's going to break there first, so keep your ears peeled. He's going to release any information as it comes, breaking news source. It's not going to be TMZ. It's going to be on his YouTube page. That's right. Make sure you go check him out on Instagram. What other social media you got? Instagram, Twitter. Twitter, Twitter? Yeah, Twitter. Okay. Um, what else? TikTok? 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 No, but I need to, right? Okay. You were telling me the other day. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm going to do my dances. Oh, I know. Really? Yeah. Damn, I have to pick up the, well, I've got the, the, the hips back. Yeah, man, I've seen it. I can do some salsa, salsa dancing. Salsa, okay. <laughs> so, so if you want to see a salsa dance, go check out his TikTok. I got a TikTok, but I need to get on it. I got about 10,000 followers and I've done two posts. Yeah. So I should actually push Pretty some. Pretty good, he's got about 2 million on Instagram, so make sure you guys check him out over there. And then uh, check out his website also. What else you got? Just come and see us at the gym. Yeah, you man. Know? Dragon's Lair, yeah. Vegas. You guys will right enjoy Right by it. the airport. Yeah, right by the airport. 15, uh, sorry, t eight minutes away from Luxor, but 15 minutes away from the airport, if that, maybe yeah. 10 minutes away from the airport. Yeah. Um, and the gym itself has the who's who of, of fitness industry. We've got a lot of Raiders players here. We have a lot of UFC fighters here. Um, and we just have a, a lot of very enthusiastic people who love to train you. So if you are interested in, in being part of that, you come and see us and, uh, you know, get get uh, get your fitness goals in line and see yourself taken to the next level around the people who are chasing their goals and dreams too. That's what I like to hear. Perfectly said. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Go show this man some love and we're out.